Hey, this is Tizio, and we're in my studio here in Los Angeles, California. So how I got started in my early career was in my early teenage years, I started to play bass and play in bands. Um, from there, I started to get interested more into the background stuff like recording and mixing. Um, and then by the time I was uh, leaving high school, I actually started to do an internship at a record label. So all of my mixing, I do it here at my house. Um, I sort of have a bedroom that's been converted into a studio from what you can see here. Um, and I love my floor to ceiling windows, just lets a, lets a lot of light in. What I have in my studio these days, let's come over here. I have the Apple uh, Mac Pro computer. We have the McDSP APB16, uh, 5057 Orbit Summing Mixer, and my Lynx uh, A to D Converter. As far as outboard gear, I have this UTA Fairchild 660, or Unfairchild to say. Um, and then I have my DW Fern VT5 EQ. Speaker-wise, I have PMC 62s, which provide plenty of loudness in my room. Um, monitor control system, I have a Grace uh, digital and analog monitor controller. Um, and then as far as, I do have a mic chain in here, just in case I ever have to re-record vocals for anyone or like emergency stuff. I have a TubeTech CL1B and then I have an Aurora GTP1. Um, and yeah, so that's most of the gear in my studio. So there's not a lot I can talk about the stuff that I'm working these days, but a couple things that I'm kind of in the middle of finishing stuff and stuff's coming out. We have Pablo Londra, who is a huge Spanish artist from Latin America. Um, T Grizzly's project, which I literally just delivered the Atmos mixes right before you guys got here, um, and his project is incredible. Um, and then Lil TJ finishing up some stuff. And yeah, I mean, Chris is done for a while, so it's about time to start working on a new album. Working on the stuff with Chris is definitely the most challenging stuff that I have to deal with in my career. Um, only because I'm the point person from the start of a record to the very, very end of the record. And what I mean by that is a lot of times I'm doing, I'm the person selecting the beat or getting the song and then getting the files and then cutting Chris on it and then it's going in a batch to see if it's going to end up on the album. And if it does end up on the album, then it's my job again to now go and get the producer files, the beat stems, and coordinate them with legal and the label and then take those files and mix the record and then get the file, the, the mix mastered and then master comes back to me for approval and then that then gets delivered in a sequence to the label. So definitely one of the most challenging things in my career has been working with Chris, but in a good way, meaning I was not comfortable and I was always pushing the limit and, and pushing the threshold on how much I was doing and how much I was able to take care of um, for Chris. The last project that we did with Chris Breezy took quite a while to do and part of it was due to the pandemic. So in 2020, we were, had already been working on the Breezy album and it didn't come out until 2022, as you know. Um, but the process was we were working in it and because Chris was not going to be able to tour that summer and we didn't know what summer he'd be able to tour again, we didn't want to drop an album and him not be able to go on tour, which a lot of that push on the album happens with a tour for almost any artist. Um, so that kind of got put on the back burner and instead we did the album with Young Thug, uh, Slime and B, which as you know from there came Go Crazy, uh, which is a really big record. But after all of that, we continued to work on Breezy. So I would say Breezy is two and a half years in the making um, to get that song, to get the album put together from start to finish. So some of my favorite records from the album are, one of them is Till the Wheels Fall Off. That one is featuring Lil Durk. And I actually reached out to Baines, a very close friend of mine, to help me co-mix the record. The message in this record is sort of talking about the stuff going on in society right now and partly in what's going on with Young Thug. Uh, Baines is Young Thug's engineer, so I had him mix the record with me and it was kind of a personal thing for me. Um, also, I love the record. It's fire, written by uh, my friend Rockstar. Um, and then the, another record that I love is the Wizkid song, which is Call Me Every Day. 
That record I loved because it's so simple and so just bare, you know, music wise, and it really allows the vocal to shine. Um, and then the last of my favorites, which there are many more, but this is the last one I'm gonna talk about, is Psychic featuring Jack Harlow. That's another record that I actually got to co mix with my friend Nikki, uh, who's Jack's engineer. Um, so he actually sent me Jack's vocals pretty much done, and I just mixed it into my mix with Chris. Um, but I really sort of get honed in on those records that, uh, that I do with friends and stuff like that. It's really special for me. So I've been working in music for about 13 years um, and professionally. And when I started, I actually started with Juicy J, um, which as you know is a big hip hop artist and especially was a lot bigger um, when I had started working for him in 2008. Um, but hip hop has completely taken a 180 degree turn from what it was back then to where it is now. Um, so I would say between 10, 10 to 15 years ago, hip hop was totally different. A lot of what fueled hip hop um, was social media and auto tune and stuff like that. That, that kind of stuff kind of gave everyone a voice because now it didn't matter if you could hold a, a pitch or, or sing a certain melody or whatever as a rapper, like now with auto tune, anyone could be a rapper. So it's definitely opened the floodgates um, for more artists which is good because then there's more work for everyone, uh, for mixers and recording engineers. But definitely the saturation has been a huge thing. The style that has come from new hip hop versus the old hip hop is a lot more, a lot louder, a lot more robust, um, a lot less elements in some cases, as you know, with like Drake and stuff like that. A lot of those beats barely have anything. Whereas back in the day, I remember with Juicy J, it was like, pull up a pizzicato, pull up a string, pull up another string. It was all about adding this dramaticness to the vocals. And now I feel like the voice carries that a lot. And I feel like Drake and a couple of other artists have, have really solidified that in hip hop. So I do have a favorite stage in, in the production process when it comes to making music. And right now it's mixing, um, but really my favorite part, which is never really on my time, and that's pretty much why I don't like it, is, is the recording process. Cause it's like, the creation of the record, right? Like, I feel like a lot of times a recording engineer has a lot more say in where effects or where drops or things may happen than the mixing engineer does because all these things are being done in the creation process of the record. Um, and by the time I'm getting it as a mixer, the artist, the label, everyone's heard the song hundreds of times and it's very hard for them to hear something different than what they sent me. Um, so I like the recording and the creation process because it kind of allows you to leave um, a special stamp on things and it's a cool memory to know how a record which may blow up became so big um, but mixing is definitely my favorite right now I get to be home all day I get to mix on my own time and it's just a new chapter in my life okay so how I stay up to date with new tech and stuff like that is really just the community of my co compatriots in the music industry so Baines David, Young Kim, uh, John Castelli, Ali, like all of us are just friends, you know what I mean? And everyone's always like, yo, have you tried this? Hey, have you tried this? Baines and I talk almost every day. It's like, hey, have you tried this new plugin? Oh, I've tried this now. Oh, let me show you this. It's, it's kind of like that. So that's kind of where we sort of hear from these things. A lot of times if you just go on YouTube, it's like everyone there on YouTube is showing absolutely every single plugin, but that doesn't mean it's cool. But if it reaches one of us, by somehow, then I think it's worth sharing with the others. So it kind of has to go through the clearance process to then eventually get to one of us, to then for us to then share it with each other. Okay, so some of my favorite McDSP plugins from the APB side of stuff are the Chicken Head and the Moo, the limiter, the limiter Moo. Um, and then as far as regular McDSP plugins, one that I use a lot is the Futz box. The Futz box I use a lot on ad libs and stuff like that when I radio stuff out and kind of create like a different dimension and frequency. Um, and then another sort of simple plugin that I use is the Compressor Bank 303. Um, I use that a lot on like just a snare. It's like a basic EQ that I can kind of use around a few different things. Um, a string, you know, just changing the attack and the release, I can make things work. So a couple ways that the chicken head sort of changed the way I work is towards the end of a mix, I start to realize stuff starts sticking out, vocals start sort of poking out above the mix and I really want things to be more flat 
and cohesive, especially with the hip hop stuff that is not supposed to be as dynamic. So a couple big tracks that I've used the McDSP plugins are, are pretty much everything that I've been working on for the past three years. So a couple big ones are Go Crazy, uh, Industry Baby for Lil Nas X, uh, First Class for Jack Harlow, and recently the Lil Nas X and Young Boy record that dropped. So I got a lot of big stuff coming out, but I can't really talk about it here, so you'll just have to see it on my Instagram as I post stuff. Hey, what's the move? What's the motive? Life is crazy, can't control it. I've been wanting you for so long. All my homies fucking know it. Every heart I help you hold it. Buy your soul back if you sold it. Had to break it with your last one. You ain't selfish, you just... Hey, what's the move? Thank you.